Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture on MRI and nuclear medicine. I'm Dr. Lahari here. The learning outcomes of this topic would be to list indication and contraindications of MRI in head and neck pathology as well as the indication and contraindications of nuclear medicine to list their advantages and disadvantages and also safety concerns. Uh, on the other hand, let's move on to magnetic resonance imaging, which also uses a gantry and the patient has to lie down in this. This was first uh, used or described by Paul uh, Lotterber and Peter Mansfield in 1973. And it was used and developed for clinical use only in the 80s. They were given the Nobel Prize for, Prize for Physiology and Medicine only in 2003. When you look at the scans, uh, the sections look very similar to a CT scan for someone who is novice but when you look at them more clearly you will understand that there are differences. So this is an axial uh, MRI and this is a coronal section and uh, you will notice that there are differences and this is for example a sagittal section. So the differences in MRI and CT scan is that there is a lot more better soft tissue uh, visualization in an MRI scan. So the applications of uh, MRI in the maxofacial uh, area for maxofacial diseases is first of all evaluation of soft tissue conditions, um, position and integrity of the TMJ articular disc. The reason why I have marked it in red is uh, virtually MRI is one of the best methods of visualizing the articular disc and um, uh, one of the uh, uh, best applications in the head and neck region or in the maxillofacial region would be to evaluate the TMJ. Other than that, MRI can also be useful in visualizing neoplasia of the soft tissues like the tongue, cheek, salivary glands and neck, uh, specifically malignant involvement of the lymph nodes and perineural invasion, salivary gland diseases like the cysts, neoplasm, infections and obstructions, vascular lesions and suspected early osteomyelitis of jaws to determine edematous changes in fatty marrow and surrounding soft tissue. The advantages of MRI is it offers best contrast resolution of soft tissues. There is no ionizing radiation involved. This is something very, very important to be noted. And direct multiplanar imaging is possible without actually reorientation of the patient at all. This is, for example, uh, MRI of the TMJ region. You can see the different anatomy here. Uh, just to orient you, this is the condylar head and this is the external auditory meatus. You will notice that this is the disc, the posterior part of the disc, the anterior band of the disc and uh, the uh, middle portion of the disc which gives you an idea as to how clearly the disc can be uh, visualized. So this is just to show you comparatively, this is an MRI image of the uh, medial section of the disc. This is an autopsy image where you see the TMJ, the condylar uh, head and this is the disc that is seen. On the uh, open mouth MRI, the uh, image appears to be anteriorly, the disc sorry, appears to be anteriorly displaced and uh, <coughs> uh, just as you are seeing it in this image here. So, uh, of course, MRI comes with its own set of uh, disadvantages, some of them being long imaging times. Sometimes uh, the patient is made to lie down in the gantry for as long as 45 minutes, which can be quite long. And uh, because of which patients with claustrophobia have um, uh, inability to tolerate uh, confined spaces within the scanner. And it really tests the time that the patient can actually lie down still within the uh, scanner. MRI is contraindicated in the presence of ferromagnetic metals. For example, foreign objects which are uh, implanted electronic medical devices like cardiac pacemakers, cerebral aneurysmal clips and in patients with embedded ferrous foreign bodies like shrapnel or uh, bullets. What happens is the strong magnetic fields that are created in an MRI may move these objects. So it causes, it could also cause excessive heating or induce strong electric currents which can harm the patient. So if the object moves, which means that the pacemaker or a uh, aneurysmal clip, which is supposed to be in one particular area, because of the uh, magnetic resonance imaging, the magnetic field created, it moves this object and it uh, obviously can cause harm to the patient rather than actually uh, doing, um, I mean, uh, benefiting the patient. 
also dental restorations titanium implants orthodontic appliances they do not move but they could cause distortion of the final image and hence the image that you're trying to see could be uh, marred or the quality of the image could be highly dis uh, diminished and there are some special considerations in uh, during imaging of patients with orthodontic appliances if they are removable appliances they should be removed uh, steel arch wires especially the stainless steel arch wires they need to be removed as well uh, because uh, they can also cause a lot of uh, distortion or um, <clears throat> you know they could cause a div uh, image uh, a noise which allows uh, um, which may make it difficult for the image to be uh, diagnosed uh, well and hence brackets bands and fixed retainers also need to be checked to ensure that they're securely attached because all of these are made of uh, uh, stainless steel which could move due to the magnetic field strong magnetic field created during the uh, MRI procedure itself moving on to nuclear medicine Radionucleotide imaging is a form of functional imaging. Like I told you in the beginning of this chapter, this imaging modality helps in assessing the functioning and abnormal biochemical processes of certain human diseases. So it's basically used for assessing functioning of the brain, thyroid, heart, lungs, kidneys and GI tract. Also used for diagnosis and follow-up metastatic diseases, bone tumors and infection. So the most common use is uh, that in uh, cancer patients where uh, the progress of the disease uh, can be used to uh, can be determined using nuclear medicine and also uh, whether the disease has progressed to metastatic or whether where the primary tumor is and where is the secondaries. Those are all very clearly visualized using nuclear medicine. What essentially is done in this is a radionucleotide dye uh, is injected into the patient and the one commonly used is technetium protectate and it has a half-life of six hours so when injected IV it gets concentrated in uh, uh, glands such as the salivary gland, thyroid and gastric mucosa and also it can be uh, bound to other molecules to image the bone. So what it does is it, emit, it emits gamma rays um, but not charged particles which can be detected by a gamma scintillation camera or an anger camera. So essentially what happens is when the dye is injected into the body and the patient is inside a large huge gamma camera similar to the scanner used in a CT or an MRI scanner, it uh, gets concentrated in all, all parts of the body, the, the dye and then uh, where based on the area where it is uh, accumulated, the, <clears throat> the imaging modality helps us uh, detect the, uh, the, the function or the defect in that particular area uh, this is a case for example of a 14 year old female patient with uh, chronic osteomyelitis on the panoramic radiograph you are able to visualize expansion and sclerosis of the mandible on this side just compare this area to the other side which appears normal so there is an osteomyelitic region here which is not very obvious uh, not very obvious on this panoramic radiograph and that's the reason why this patient subjected to a SPECT which is a single photon emission computed tomography you see that there is increased activity in the posterior mandible on this side okay so that is uh, planar radionucleotide imaging and this is how a SPECT image looks like excessive amount of uptake of dye and increased activity in the posterior mandible so when a CT scan was taken for this patient and a SPECT was taken and both of these images were fused, you can see that there is increased activity on this uh, posterior surface of the mandible indicating that e exact location of the uh, disease. <coughs> on the other hand, positron emission tomography or PET Usual, uh, which be, uh, is also a method of nuclear imaging used to visualize the uh, human body, the functioning. Uh, this is an example of FDG PET CT scan. FDG is a molecule. I'll come to the details of it in a while. Um, here it has been utilized to image a patient who has fibrous dysplasia. If you've noticed that there are three spots which have been highlighted here where you can see that there is increased uptake of the dye and the corresponding CT image shows us that there is a radio opacity uh, changes to show you that there is some um, changes in the bone here. 
right so uh, this case shows the three different areas where the bone has shown uh, fibrous dysplasia changes and uh, mimicking malignancy very closely so that's why probably this patient was subjected to positron emission tomography to understand uh, the uh, pathophysiology of this disease so the um, uh, FDG stands for fluorodeoxyglucose. It is just one molecule that is used in this PET scan. So PET imaging is a lot more sensitive than uh, the gamma camera, 10 ti 100 times more sensitive. And it uses positron emitting radionucleotides like the fluorodeoxyglucose. So in this case here, which you can see, uh, the PET scan shows abnormal focal uptake in the regions of the stomach, showing that probably there is a tumor here and on the other hand the urinary bladder and the brain cells show normal uptake of the dye so uh, the applications of nuclear medicine and maxillofacial disease especially for bone scintigraphy and spect would be to visualize uh, primary and metastatic bone diseases also to understand the progress of the disease uh, or whether the disease is uh, progressing further or has the patient healed and TMJ abnormalities like condylar hyperplasia and resorption, osteomyelitis, osteonecrosis of the jaws, skeletal uh, dysplasias like fibrous dysplasia or PETS disease. PET scan can be used to monitor metastatic bone disease, primary and recurrent malignancies and osteomyelitis as well. Uh, <clears throat> to end, I would just like to introduce the term called as image fusion. Uh, this is the term used when multiple patient images are registered and overlaid or merged to provide additional information. Fused images may be created from multiple images from the same imaging modality or by combining information from multiple modalities such as MRI, CT, PET and SPECT. Uh, for example, this is a fusion image where you're, they have uh, merged the images of a PET, MRI and CT to get uh, much more detailed information of the tumor, the spread of ex uh, tumor and the extent of the tumor. This on the other hand is a combination of a PET and CT fusion which uh, shows you the image of the head and neck area and where the dye has been taken up uh, and, and details of where the uh, tumor involvement is. So um, that's all for now. This is a, a simple class, a small class. I hope you've understood. If you have any doubts, please uh, uh, get back to me. You can uh, um, text me or you can also write in the comments and then I'll get back to you. For more details, I would suggest that you read the textbook. It gives you a lot more details and uh, if for in-depth understanding as well. Thank you.